Hello everyone, welcome back to Kaushal Bioprep. In today's video lecture, we are going to discuss another topic that is the prawn culture. So let's start with the introduction. So prawns are highly valued aquatic crustacean belonging to the order Decapoda under the class Crustacea. So they are very important for both domestic consumption in uh, most of the countries they are uh, you know part of the uh, marine food and uh, export market uh, for export market also they are very important and they are contributing significantly in the aquatic uh, you know uh, culture industry worldwide so the prawn culture involves the breeding of the prawn, prawn then rearing and harvesting of the prawn in controlled environment such as pond tanks and cages and in india the south uh, india and southeast a southeast asia uh, prawn culture has developed rapidly due to the favorable climatic conditions and high global demand now currently if you see uh, this particular species that is the macro uh, macro brachium uh, rosenbergii is the favorite species of indian prawn cu uh, culture and in india the prawn breeding unit of uh, central inland fishery research institute develops indigenous technology of the prawn culture in the year 1975 so that means this practice has uh, existed since a very long time so this particular species is also called the giant freshwater prawn and the identification features of this prawn is these like the presence of the gray and longitudinal streak of the light and dark color the uh, this is the largest uh, uh, Periport that is the limb of the adult male is dark blue and all this. So these are the identification features. If you want to uh, learn more about the features, you can pause and read those features. But we are uh, con uh, you know um, interested in the culture of the prawn, not this particular species. This overall, what is uh, you know how prawn culture and what are the techniques. So the species of the prawn in the aquacultures, uh, th there can be freshwater prawns and marine prawns. So the first species, the giant freshwater prawn, this is, is the most widely cultured species in the Asia. Then there is another species that is this one and it is commonly found in the Indian rivers that is the macro uh, brachium malcol mas uh, uh, If I am uh, taking the name incorrectly, I am very sorry. But you just need to, uh, you know, memorize uh, one or two names so that you can um, uh, just recognize them in your exam if they come along. So uh, the marine prawn will belong to the family uh, Pinaidae and the important species are these one. I hope you can see this. So there is tiger prawn, there is Pacific white shrimp now dominant in the global uh, aquaculture. There is Indian white prawn then the banana prawn. So these are the marine species of the prawn. Now let's talk about let, a little bit about the life cycle of the prawn. So the prawns are the omnivore. Uh, and they feed on the detritus, detritus, plankton and the benthic organisms in the uh, ecosystem wherever they are present whether it uh, be marine or the freshwater. The life cycle stages include egg and then it is followed by Nopolis, uh, Zoe, uh, Mrs, uh, post larva, juvenile and adult. These are some larval stages of the crustaceans. Uh, I think I have already made one lecture on it. So you can see that lecture also if you want to learn more about it. Now the larval stages requires brackish water and while the adult one hatcheries also uses the adult one uses the another portion basically. So the larval stages is specified with the brackish water and the macrobrachium hatcheries also uses brackish water for early larval development. That means you need to understand the life cycle right if you want to culture these particular uh, organisms. So growth occurs by molting which is called ecdesis. Now again if you are not familiar what ecdesis is, uh, you can search this lecture under the name of molting I think. I have already made a video over it. Uh, so uh, in this uh, particular um, process the exoskeleton is shed and a new one forms. right? Now if you talk about the culture system, this is a, the culture system is extensive, semi-intensive, intensive and super intensive. So there are four ways in extensive culture the low stocking density relies on the natural productivity and low yield so yield will be less because the stocking density is less and it is relying solely on the natural productivity of the pond in semi-intensive the stocking density and the supplementary feed is there and some aeration is used and the yield will increase pe yield is very low here yield will increase per gram per hectare per kg per hectare per cycle the yield is more in intensive 
कल्चर द स्टॉकिंग डेंसिटी इज अगेन मोर देन द सेमी इंटेंसिव आर्टिफिशियल फीडिंग इज ऑल्सो देयर एरेशन इज देयर अलॉन्ग विद दैट देर इज बायो सिक्योरिटी एंड द यील्ड विल अगेन इंक्रीज एंड इन सुपर इंटेंसिव विच इज ऑल्सो कॉल द बायोफ्लॉक बेस्ड कल्चर द स्टॉकिंग डेंसिटी इज द हाइएस्ट and the uh, with bioflock technology for water quality management so the, this particular technology is being used the bioflock technology uh, technology is used to increase the uh, water quality uh, required as for the culture right yeah sorry okay there is something wrong now what are the methods of the prawn culture so traditional uh, an extensive culture method there is semi intensive so that means uh, according to the culture type the different methods are there so in traditional or extensive culture it is uh, practiced in the tidal pond and uh, berries low lying field basically which are connected to the estuaries to uh, estuaries ke sath jo uh, basically low lying fields hote hain wahan pe ye practice kiya jata hai and it relies solely on the natural seed stock very very important thing extensive culture and traditional culture solely relies on the natural seed stock uh, while post larval and the natural productivity uh, that means the uh, post larvae are wild and natural productivity should be high of that region only then the culture can be maintained but the input is low and yield is also low in this case but in case of the semi intensive culture again the moderate stocking density is there as compared to the previous one the supplementary feeding is there with formulated diet which will increase the productivity aeration is also there fertilization is also used for the pond and the yield will again increase around 500 to 2000 kg per hectare per cycle of the culture in intensive culture the stocking density is much higher uh, there is complete reliance on the artificial feed you should understand this there is no reliance on the uh, you know natural feed particular aeration is there water exchange is there and it requires careful disease management also the yield will be much more than the previous one it is around 10000 to 15000 kg per hectare per cycle now if we talk about the culture hatchery and seed production is very very important so the brood stock uh, which is the basically collected from the wild and the hatchery reared so in this particular uh, penates the eye stalk ablation is used to induce the maturation this is uh, some kind of procedure which is done so eye stalk ablation is done to induce the maturation and spawning by removing the inhibitory effect on the of the sinus gland so there is some uh, gland that is called the sinus gland it is present on the base of the eye stalk so eye stalk ablation is done to stimulate you know, the, uh, the basically to induce the maturation and how it is done it is done uh, by removing the inhibitory effect of the sinus gland okay so this thing you need to remember then the larval rearing the nopulus or nopuli fed on the micro algae these are some example ketocerus and esco eso crisis later stage fed on the artemia nopuli and the formulated microrites and then the seed production so post larvae like post larvae 15 post larvae 20 they are released into the grown out ponds so in hatchery uh, you do this procedure that is called the eye stalk ablation to induce maturation and spawning and it is done by removing the inhibitory effect of the sinus gland <coughs> excuse me now the grown out culture practices is the uh, pond preparation which includes the drying liming and pluffing filling and fertilization these things we have already discussed in the fish culture also stocking density should be maintained and it depends on the culture type uh, for semi uh, intensive culture the density is less for intensive culture the density is more feeding mein kya hoga there is balanced formulated feed which contains uh, 25 to 35% of the protein and 5 to 7% lipid on feed management feeding trays are used to monitor the uneaten feed and adjust the ratio to reduce the wastage then finally the water management uh, is done to maintain dissolve oxygen more than 4 ppm ph should be uh, in the range of 7.5 to 8.5 salinity uh, will vary if you are rearing the fresh water species or the marine species <clears throat> now what are the steps in the prawn culture 
सो अगेन देर इज साइट सिलेक्शन देर इज फार्म कंस्ट्रक्शन प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम एंड हार्वेस्टिंग एंड प्रोसेसिंग जस्ट लाइक एनी अदर कल्चर राइट साइट सिलेक्शन में यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट देर आर सम क्राइटेरिया यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्लाइमेट ऑफ द पर्टिकुलर एरिया टोपोग्राफी सॉइल क्वालिटी एंड वाटर क्वालिटी राइट सो द क्लाइमेट शुड बी वॉर्म ट्रॉपिकल सब ट्रॉपिकल इज द बेस्ट क्लाइमेट रेनफॉल एवेपोरेशन सनलाइट विंड स्पीड दीज ऑल थिंग्स अफेक्ट द प्रोडक्शन सो यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्लाइमेट ऑफ द एरिया वे आर यू आर गोइंग टू यू नो डू दिस प्रैक्टिस टोपोग्राफी फ्लैट जेंटल स्लोप्स लो लाइंग एरियाज वाटर लॉस्ड एरिया सेलिनिटी एंड एल्कलिटी एल्कलाइन एरिया सेलाइन और इधर एल्कलाइन बोथ एरियाज कैन बी यूज सॉइल क्वालिटी इफ यू सी द सेंडी क्ले लोम या सिल्ट क्ले लोम सॉइल कैन बी गुड फॉर दिस वाटर रिटेंशन कैपेसिटी शुड बी ग्रेटर देन एटी फाइव परसेंट एंड क्ले कैन बी मोर देन लेस देन सिक्सटी परसेंट एंड इट शुड बी अवॉइडिंग द एसिड सल्फेट सॉइल्स वाटर क्वालिटी इफ यू सी द पोल्यूशन फ्री ऑफ कॉस पी एच इन दिस रेंज एंड टेम्परेचर इज दिस रेंज एंड द डी ओ नीड्स टू बी इन द रेंज ऑफ थ्री टू सेवन पार्ट्स पर मिलियन Now, if you talk about the farm construction size and the depth matters, the minimum size should be one hectare. Water depth must be one point five to two meter, and the uh, you know the farm construction can be done in square form. Economically, uh, uh, much better rectangular form can be done, and uh, um, the farm can be made in the rectangular shape also. It is better for harvesting. Dike, uh, what is dike? The pond bottom, slope to drained point outline. It is done every pond. The, if you see this is the um, layout so the one side is higher and other one is a lower so this is a slope like thing which is made for outlet and inlet right so that outlet and inlet do not mix and again the pond bottom slope is there to drain the water out right now the water supply and drainage is there ground water is preferable for the culture and canal water requires purification and microfiltration also now the production system first of all the brood stock the adult the female brooders from the pond and fish trees uh, buried female used once then the fertilization male and female ratio is maintained external fertilization is done eggs on the female abdomen hatching into the larvae that is the zoe then the larval development is uh, Done in the uh, you know uh, in the done done in the production system also. Uh, basically, in the pond, the larva will convert from one uh, stage to another stage. For example, from zoe to eleven larval stages, and then eight mm post larval larvae stages are there. Metamorphosis is that there minimum sixteen days will take uh, will be taken for metamorphosis. Longer if the conditions are not uh, compatible or poor. So <clears throat> then. feed and feeding if you see so natural food is preferred but it is insufficient as we see in extensive farming and and semi intensive the difference is in the feeding so supplementary feed is also used ingredients can vary again uh, but these are some this like uh, animal by product broken rice uh, tapioca trash fish these are some examples feed must be pelletized so you will give the feed in the form of pellets quick sinking and intact for hours that is the reason for pelletized station then feeding uh, is done once daily and pellets spread uniformly or placed in a container and feeding rate is adjusted by the prawn age finally the harvesting and processing so harvest depend on the size and the market demand uh, the partial harvesting is done uh, 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 that is called the seeding or complete draining of the pond can be done and the prawns are washed iced and transported for the marketing or export now if you see the growth and the market size so pond reared giant uh, <clears throat> pond reared giant prawn uh, reach marketable size of uh, uh, size in around 5 to 8 months depending on the stocking rate also and the culture condition also and growth is not always uniform the prawns from the same brood often show size variation right so uniform growth is not there and regular size checks are necessary before the harvest harvesting methods are again partial or complete harvesting can be done then after harvesting the handling or uh, the transport during the harvest the handling and after harvesting the transport these two things must be uh, done carefully uh, 
सो टू इंश्योर द गुड प्रोडक्ट क्वालिटी एंड फ्रेश वाटर पॉन्ड्स मे टर्न मशी इफ मिस हैंडल दिस इज वेरी कॉमन प्रॉब्लम इन द बॉन्ड कल्चर राइट एंड देन द मार्केट ऑफ कॉस मार्केट डिमांड विल लूज फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर यू नो हार्वेस्ट एंड प्रॉन मस्ट नॉट बी क्रश ड्यूरिंग द हार्वेस्ट आफ्टर हार्वेस्टिंग फॉर नॉन लाइफ सेल्स इट दे विल बी किल इमिडिएटली इन द आइस वाटर मिक्सर एट जीरो डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड दे आर वॉश्ड इन द क्लोरिनेटेड टैप वाटर इफ दे आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द लाइफ सेल दे आर ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन द एरेटेड वाटर अराउंड द टेम्परेचर ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी टू डिग्री सेल्सियस फॉर फ्रेश सेल दे आर कैप्ट ऑन द आइस एंड बट दे आर नॉट यू नो कैप्ट दे आर मोर देन थ्री डेज दैट मीन्स अप टू थ्री डेज दे आर कंसिडर्ड एज फ्रेश सेल पॉन राइट देन फॉर फ्रोजन सेल दे आर फ्रीज क्विकली अबाउट माइनस टेन टू माइनस ट्वेंटी एंड दे आर स्टोर्ड इन सच टेम्परेचर ना वॉट आर द डिजीजेज एंड चैलेंजेस सो दीज आर फ्यू थिंग्स दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट वायरल और बैक्टीरियल डिजीजेस कैन यू नो मैनिफेस्ट इन द पॉन्ड वेर यू आर कल्चरिंग योर प्रॉन सो वाइट स्पॉट्स सिंड्रोम वायरस एक्सक्यूज मी दिस इज अ डबल स्टैंडेड डी एन ए वायरस विच इज़ हाईली लीथल एंड इट कॉज इज रैपिड मोर्टैलिटी इन पॉन्ड then there is tora syndrome uh, syndrome virus and there is yellow head virus these are some viruses which affect the prawn culture and infect your prawn species then in case of the bacterial uh, diseases the vibriosis is very very common it is called by the vibrio uh, harvey and uh, another the related species of the vibrio this is the common uh, you know disease which are uh, seen in the pr- uh, prawn cultures what is the prevention so you can use Uh, SPF rootstock and uh, good biosecurity water management and probiotics mainly are used immunostimulants ki tarah so that you can prevent the disease outbreak now again the uh, economic importance of prawn culture is that high value export industry hai ye uh, prawns are among the very uh, you know top uh, foreign exchange earners in the uh, aquaculture the uh, prawns are commonly consumed in various countries and they are transported uh you know from the countries who, which rear these uh, species as marine food and they provide employment opportunities again in rural areas the prawn culture is done and they play a, f- a very important role in food security and protein supply so overall the prawn culture uh, if you see it has transformed from traditional to low input farming to intensive now the culture is also technology driven and uh, it is there to ensure high profitability but challenges of course are there because there is disease outbreak there is environmental impact and sustainability and lot of things are involved but the future of the prawn culture lies on the eco friendly practices that means no need of antibiotics and such chemicals which can actually enter the food chain and cause problems further on right so this is it for today i hope you understand something if you have any question or query feel free to comment it down if you understand something do like the video share it with your friends who can be benefited from the lecture and subscribe for more so stay connected for upcoming lectures thank you so much